So more fun with multiplication. If I say two-thirds of $36, what does this mean? It still means multiplication, so this means two-thirds times 36 over 1, right? Again, do your work the smart way. Can you reduce anything here before you multiply? Yeah. What can you reduce? Three and the Alright, so what's the common factor between 3 and the 36? Three. 3, I just don't think it could be because 3 is a prime number. So 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 36 how many times? And so what do we have left? That's just 24. So, if I look at this, two-thirds of $36 is how much? It's $24. You guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right, and let's try this guy. Because all the cool kids are trying this stuff. Yeah, too bad mathematics isn't like a drug. Then you guys will be all over this. Oh man, I gotta get me some fractions. I'm feeling kind of. <laughs> I'm hitting the valley, man. I need a little pick me up. You got anything? Of course, it reminds me of this horrible, like, 30 minute commercial for classic rock we used to always watch when I was growing up. Is that Freedom Rock, man? Yeah, man. We'll tune it up, man. Never mind. I watch way too much TV, as is clearly evidenced by everything you guys see and hear from me. All right, so 15x over 4y squared times 2xy over 10x to the third. Wow, right? Are any of you guys scared? Yeah, that's what you done heard. I know that you were scared. <laughs> Don't look me like I'm word. I'm trying to make you guys unscared. Unscared. Oh, I like that one. That one is going on Twitter. Now, here's something you can do to help you out here. Rewrite everything using all the factors. Yeah, why is your phone going off? On my video? Yeah, it's always not mine. Uh, how can you rewrite 15x? How can you break this down? Yeah, how can you break down 15? That's 3 times 5 times x, right? And then over here you just have 2 times x times y. You can't really do anything else with that. It's just 2xy. How can you break down the 4y squared? 2 times 2 times what? You've got two factors of y. And then what about the 10? 2 times 5 times? Build it. All right. You've got all these factors. When you simplify, remember, you do one on the top and one on the bottom. So tell me a pair of factors that I can, that I can reduce. I've got this x and that x, one at a time, pair at a time. <coughs> what else do you have? I've got another factor of x. Anything else? I've got a 2 and a 2. Now, this 2 really could have been reduced with this 2 or either one of these, right? But only 1 to 1. It has to be 1 to 1. Anything else that can reduce? The y's. The y's can reduce, a pair of y's. Anything else? 5 over 5. Is there anything else? That should be it. Now, I tried to cancel everything, hopefully clearly enough for you. What's left in the numerator? Just 3. 3 is all that's left in the numerator. In the denominator, what's left? 4y. Four 4y. Four and an x, right? So the best way of writing that would be 4xy. 
That is the best way to write that answer. Is there anything else these guys have in common? Maybe when you put it all together, you might have missed anything. Can you reduce the three with a four? No, and X and Y, those guys are not gonna, those guys are not going to go away. Man, I feel like that'd be a fun question to put on a test. What do you guys think? Is it good? Now, we've talked about multiplying fractions. What do you think we need to talk about next? Division. Now, before we can talk about division, I do want to mention something very special to you guys, and that is the notion of the reciprocal. Okay. And here is how we talk about the reciprocal. So two numbers, two numbers are called reciprocals if their product is one. What does the word product mean again? Multiplication. Product means multiplication, right? So we're talking about two numbers that when you multiply them you get one. So what this means is that a fraction A over B and the fraction B over A, these guys are reciprocals. And you may say, why are they reciprocals? Well, these guys are reciprocals because look what happens when you multiply them. If I do A over B times B over A, right? Doing everything that we've done so far with multiplying fractions, this is A over B times, or A times B over B times A. Can you reduce this? How would you reduce this? If in the last problem you can cancel X over X, what A over A would reduce, right? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't B over B reduce? Mm -hmm. And what would you be left with? Nothing. Oh, see, this is where I get upset. The answer is not nothing. What is A divided by A? What's A divided by itself? One. one. What's B divided by itself? One. Is one nothing? No, it may be the loneliest number, according to Three Dog Night, but it's not nothing. So I multiply these and I get one, not nothing. A lot of times when you guys say nothing, that mathematically means you're talking about what number? Zero, and that's not what we have here. But I want us to go back a long time ago. We were talking about some very special words here. We said that this guy is the multiplicative identity. Remember that fancy word? The multiplicative identity is what you can multiply a number times and you won't change that number. And we've done that before, right? You can multiply a number times one and did it change the meaning of the number? No. We could get an equivalent fraction, but it didn't change the meaning of the number. So this is a multiplicative identity and these guys right here, these reciprocals, so these are reciprocals. Another word, or another phrase would be multiplicative inverses. Reciprocals are multiplicative inverses. When we talked about additive inverses, you guys call those guys opposites. Okay. And the additive identity was zero. What happens if you take a number and you add its opposite? Like five and negative five, and you add those, what do you get? you get zero, which was the additive identity. When you multiply a number times its reciprocal, these are multiplicative inverses, and you get the multiplicative identity, which is one. And we need this concept of reciprocals so that we can do division, at least the way that we have all learned how to do division. There are several ways of doing division. I'm just gonna try to keep it simple for you. Keep it with what you know. Uh, just a little side note here.
all numbers all numbers have a reciprocal except for zero. Zero is the one number that does not have a reciprocal. Zero is the one number that doesn't have a reciprocal. If you look at these fractions, you get the reciprocal just by flipping it upside down, right? If I flip zero upside down, I would have something like one over zero. But you already know what happens if you divide by zero. You get what? You get something that's undefined. So, easy. Zero doesn't have a reciprocal, but everything else does. And we're going to use that concept of reciprocals to help us do division.